stepped right in freaking yeah you heard it right i installed live scope on my john boat my alumacraft 1648 john boat and let me tell you i did a whole install video that smells like smells like does smell like crawfish only to mess up i don't know half of it because i did quite a few things wrong this is your panoptics cable right here this is where your no holy shit what did i do i'm not going to make an, another install video and take all this stuff out and redo it it's pretty simple, but I will show you what all I did. This unit right here is my 94 SV. This is what I'm running the live scope on. This unit is my, no, I'm sorry. This unit right here is my 94 SV. This is what I'm running my live scope on right now. My newer unit is a 93 SV, which has the UHD ultra high definition, which the transducer I got works with this. And live scope on this and this is gonna be the same quality. So I choose to run it on the ultra high definition. And, and I'm gonna tell you, it is very ultra high definition. The reason I put live scope on my John boat is because, hmm, I don't know, why not? Why not pimp this thing out as much as I can get it pimped out? Somebody asked me the other day, they were like, hey, what else you gonna do to it? I'll do whatever I want to. I was like, I don't know, I might put some power poles on it. You know, I might put some sea deck on it. I don't know, sky's the limit with the John boat. That's why I love John boats. They're easy to customize. They're a lot cheaper than a, a bass boat to get what you want out of it. Yeah, I don't have the speed. They're so much fun. I really, really enjoy having a John boat. So let's just get down to it. Where I mounted my, my box, how my transducers mounted, how I ran my wire, and the extra battery that I had to put in. It was a lot of stuff I had to learn the hard way. That's just how I do things the hard way. So let's get into it. All right, just like I said earlier, the bottom one is my newer unit. This is the 93 SV. This is what I'm running my side imaging on, which you can't see because it ain't in the water, but that's the side imaging. And I have all my presets already set for side imaging, down imaging, and I got a map, and then I have a map with down imaging right here. And then this up here is where I run my live scope. And these Garmin screens, they're kind of like iPhones. They're super, super responsive when you zoom in or zoom out you know, or if you want to move around, whatever. They're super responsive. It is the setup. A John boat, bass boat, it doesn't matter. Like this is the ultimate setup right here. Live scope and your side down imaging maps, this and that. And you're constantly, you know, when it's new like this, you're not gonna take your eyes off the live scope and your neck, your neck meat is gonna knot up and cramp up. But I think along with time, once you kind of get used to like scanning and not and really know what you're looking for in this and that, I think it'll it'll get better. But don't get sucked into the live scope and let it take away from your natural fishing instincts. This is how I've got it mounted. And let me just take this. And as you can tell, I've got this one mounted on a Kong mount from TH Marine. Very, very good mount. I had this mount laying around for a while. Didn't know what I was gonna do with it. And then I was like, all right, well, the perfect application is to put another unit on it right below my live scope. So it really sits nice in there. It looks good. This one I have mounted on a balls out mount. As you can tell right there, very, very sturdy mount, very sturdy. And that way I can kind of get this above this and just stack them, you know, and it looks totally badass. And this right here is the black box. That is the brains to your live scope. This is what makes it work, all right? And they say you need to mount it in a dry place to where it's not getting a lot of beating and banging, which I don't go really fast enough for this thing to beat around. So that's why I mounted it in my, uh, in my compartment where I keep all my tackle boxes. And it's gonna be a dry space. It's not gonna get beaten a lot because I really don't go that fast for it to get beat up. 
and my wires as you can tell were ran up underneath the deck and one goes right to the unit the network cable goes right to the unit and I've got the power wire as you can see right there that I ran straight back to the battery we're gonna get into that here in a second And this right here is the almighty Garmin LiveScope transducer. This is one of the first mistakes that I made when installing this deal on my trolling motor because my trolling motor head was actually backwards. I had it pointing this way. Okay, so I screwed up. You're an idiot. This is the correct way it needs to point. And I had it backwards. And I was wondering when I took it out, I was like, why is everything upside down like it was... It was like upside down and backwards. So when I was looking front, I was actually looking to the back. Something ain't right with the pan optics. Live scope. I don't know if I got that damn transducer upside down. And that's the way I had it. Well, that's the way I had it. And it was upside down. So it was, it was just weird. I don't know how to explain it. But I knew something wasn't right. And then, thankfully, I called my buddy, Billy, which is a, uh, he knows in-depth stuff about the live scope stuff he told me he showed me his trolling motor he's like yeah dude you got it wrong i was like yeah, i figured this is the correct way that it should be mounted even like with the loop right here i need to put a piece of tape right this is right because you want this thing to be able to spin 360 degrees so you need to leave that big of a loop or maybe a little bit smaller now let's get to the other stuff <laughs> All right, so I explained to you about the first mistake I made was with the transducer on the trolling motor. It was backwards, all right? Mistake number one, check it off, done, fixed. Mistake number two, power. So when I tapped in to my other power I had ran up there for my other Garmin unit and my lights, it wasn't enough, all right? So if you don't have the right amount of power going to your live scope, it won't cut on. And if it's just enough power going to it, it'll lock up. Every time I would run my trolling motor, my live scope would lock up. I had one battery running everything in this John boat. Can't do that. It's gotta have its own power, which it should anyway. But like I said, I was in a hurry. I was wanting to get it installed, get it working, and get out on the water. But the only thing that did was cause me more headache and less time to enjoy it because I'm hard-headed and I don't pay attention sometimes. It happens. This Odyssey battery is the one that I had running everything. And like I said, when I would run the trolling motor, my live scope would lock up and it would have an error message saying lost uh, network signal or whatever. And then when I stopped running the trolling motor, after about five seconds, it would kick back on and start working again. Even though it was shooting backwards and upside down, it still didn't do me any good. My boy Jamie hooked me up with an interstate battery. I went and got some eight to 10 gauge wire, ran the wire all the way up front. So now the only thing that I have on this Odyssey battery is my trolling motor. That's it, all right? Everything else is on this interstate battery. I've got three units, a radio, lights and it runs it perfect the good thing about the garmin units is it will tell you the voltage on what you're getting throughout the day so when i took it out yesterday i don't think i went below 12.4 volts or something like that like it never lost power here's another tip they say i haven't done it yet but i'm gonna do it i'm not gonna be hard-headed to put a cutoff switch on your pan opt on on your live scope box go ahead and install a cutoff switch that will cut the power off when you're not using it because if not it will drain your battery that's what they say i believe them because i didn't you know i kind of skipped over a few things that i heard what all right yeah and everything runs great now i should have done this in the first place stop being so hard on yourself well i mean it's okay i can i'm, I'm a man i can take it mistake number two solved fixed so anyway, I really didn't go over the settings on the live scope because I really don't have it dialed in. My wife, she loves me sometimes. Uh, I, re I really didn't, uh, <laughs> love you. She flipped me off. I really didn't get into the 
settings on the live scope because I don't have it dialed in just right. There's a lot of settings in there that you can mess with to really dial it in to where you're not getting a lot of noise uh, rejection or I, I can't even talk the terms because I haven't really dived into it that much. So that will be a video coming up soon. And if you enjoyed this video, give me that like, just give it to me. Give me that like if you enjoyed it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to me. Uh, and I appreciate everybody for watching and liking and commenting. The more comments, if you've got any suggestions, whatever, comment. I, you know, good, bad, it don't matter to me. I will answer them. Catch me on, uh, on uh, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, OnlyFans. And um, yeah, we'll catch you about.